In the last episode, the Western War began as Oda Nobunaga unleashed two of his top generals, Hashiba Hideyoshi and Akichi Mitsuhide, on campaigns against the Mori. While Hideyoshi's march through Harima went rather smoothly, we can see that Mitsuhide faced much tougher obstacles and hardships, all of which causing tension to rise between him and Nobunaga. Now we return to the south, as both the Shimazu and Chosokabe continue their rise to power through territorial conquest. The last time we visited the island of Kyushu was in episode 27. In that video, we saw how the Shimazu clan had found renewed strength, leading to important triumphs and significant expansion. In particular, the 1572 Battle of Kizakihara, in which Shimazu Yoshihiro would crush a numerically superior Ito force. Kizakihara would later come to be nicknamed the Okehezama of Kyushu due to how it completely altered the power balance of the island and left the Shimazu clan poised for further conquest. Over the next few years, with the Ito strength completely diminished, the Shimazu clan had slowly pushed up through their province of Hyuga. By 1576, the Ito would be defeated at Takabaru, an event which effectively put a nail in the coffin for their clan, as one year later, Daimyo Ito Yoshitsuke was forced to flee north into Bongo. With Shimazu influence swelling larger and larger, by 1578 the Shimazu would claim the whole of Hyuga, and also around that same time claim control over Higo after defeating the minor power of the Sagara clan. However, this would immediately lead to hostilities between them and the mighty Otomo clan. The Otomo have a long and storied history, over the centuries being a key player on the island of Kyushu often clashing with other major clans in western Honshu. Otomo Sorin, a man who had embraced Christianity against the wishes of his wife at the time, was a competent leader who had cemented the strength of his clan in this warring age. Although we can see that a fair portion of the Otomo vassals weren't necessarily 100% under Sorin's thumb, rather they were almost their own daimyo clans that simply bore a loose allegiance to the Otomo. Fine examples being the Tachibana and Tamura families. This may have provided some sort of internal weakness festering within the Otomo clan. Another problem was no doubt the powerful Mori clan to the east, who had made it somewhat difficult for Sorin to ever truly expand. An example of this can be seen in 1568, when the Otomo had attempted to annex the province of Hizen, now under the rule of the Ryozoji clan. The Ryazoji had stolen power away from the Shoni roughly 15 years prior and were now seen as a rising threat. When Otomo armies began marching against them, the Mori would send an expeditionary force to aid the Ryazoji, causing the Otomo effort to be for nothing. The Otomo would try to attack the Ryazoji yet again in 1570, but would still be repelled. Nevertheless, Otomo influence remained strong in northern Kyushu, and by 1576, Sorin handed leadership of the clan over to his son, Otomo Yoshimune. Of course, two years later, we saw how the Shimazu secured Hyuga, causing members of the Ito clan to flee into the arms of the Otomo. The new might of the Shimazu was now the number one threat to the Otomo. It was clear that the Shimazu were ever ambitious and would in time bring war to northern Kyushu. Thus, in effort to get a jump on their likely new enemy and reclaim Hyuga for the Ito clan, Otomo Yoshimune, along with his father, amassed a force numbering around 50,000 strong and marched south to take on the Shimazu. As the Otomo army pressed into Hyuga, they were quick to earn contempt from the common people, as due to Sorin's Christianity, he commanded his men to burn many Shinto and Buddhist sites along their warpath. The main bulk of the Otomo army under the command of Tawara Chikataka would eventually lay siege to Taka Castle under the command of Shimazu Iehiza. Even though Iehiza was vastly outnumbered, he offered a determined defensive effort, holding off the Otomo forces while a relief force led by his brothers quickly rushed to his aid. 
The daimyo of the Shimazu clan, Shimazu Yoshihiza, would bring an army up to Sarawara, where he then would await Shimazu Yoshihiro, who was held up in battle against an advancing Otomo force. He would quickly rout the Otomo before burning their fort at Matsuyama. Eventually, the forces under Yoshihiza and Yoshihiro would link up and advance together against the Otomo main body at Taka. On December 10th, both armies would clash at Minigawa. Tawara Shikataka would lead the Otomo charge, plowing into the front Shimazu ranks, leading to a brutal and chaotic melee struggle. The Otomo army still vastly outnumbered the Shimazu, causing things to look dire for Yoshihiza. Then, from the rear, Iehiza's force from Taka Castle stormed out and would assault the Otomo from the rear. The Shimazu army now grew to around 30,000, which was still roughly 20,000 less than the Otomo. However, with the Otomo being attacked from two directions, panic began to spread. Soon, massive portions of the Otomo began to break and rout, eventually causing the entire Otomo force to disintegrate. The Shimazu had won the day. This defeat would go on to cause a significant decline in the influence of the Otomo, while the Shimazu were now without a doubt a regional powerhouse. Seeing the weakening of the Otomo, the Riazoji then took the opportunity to strike out against them, claiming Chigoku province in the disarray. Upon seeing how pitiful the situation had become for the Otomo, Shimazu Yoshihiza decided to offer a ceasefire to them, understanding that a more serious threat in Kyushu may in fact actually be the dangerous Riazoji clan. Of course, the Shimazu weren't the only island clan making gains around that time. In Shikoku, Josakabe Motochika was planning his next campaign. By 1575, Motochika had usurped the Ichijo clan and claimed Tosa for himself. Now his ambition was looking towards Iyo province, home to the Kono clan. The Kono were allies to the Mori, yet with the Mori currently battling against Nobunaga in Honshu, Motochika knew that they would not receive any form of proper aid to stop a determined Chosokabe assault. Beginning in 1579, a 7,000-man Chosokabe army under Hizataka Chikunobu besieged the Kono castle of Okayama. Unfortunately, the siege would amount to nothing, as during the initial fighting, Chikunobu would be shot dead, causing his army to rout. A year later, in 1580, after the previous year's test, Motochika committed his forces to a full invasion of the province, leading now 30,000 men against the Kono. Just like he had figured, without the aid of the Mori, the Kono were powerless to stop his advance, causing the Chosokabe to seize Iyo with somewhat little difficulty. Around that time, Motochika reached out to Oda Nobunaga, believing the two to have similar aims and also similar enemies. Motochika had just attacked an ally of the Mori clan, and reasonably figured that the Mori would now be hostile towards him. On top of this, he also held an ambition of uniting Shikoku under his banner, and to do this meant also going to war against the Miyoshi, who still held considerable territory on the island. Both the Mori and Miyoshi were at war with the Oda, thus an alliance between the Oda and Chosokabe would make perfect sense. To this end, Nobunaga agreed to an alliance. However, privately, we can see that Nobunaga cared little for Motochika and actually planned to one day seize Shikoku for himself. So, what can we learn? After the surprising Shimazu victory against the Ito at Kizakihara, they had little difficulty conquering the rest of Hyuga by 1578. However, it was then that the Shimazu would come into direct contact with the Otomo, who in response immediately led a campaign to retake Hyuga. Both the Shimazu and Otomo armies would clash in a massive battle at Mimigawa, in the end leading to another Shimazu triumph, furthering their control of Kyushu. On Shikoku, Motochika faced little difficulty in dealing with the Kono clan of Iyo, who were easily crushed without the aid of their powerful Mori allies. Eventually, Motochika would even reach out to Nobunaga to cement a formal alliance between the two. Although, in reality, Nobunaga only saw this as an eventual means to an end. In the next episode, after the death of Uesugi Kenshin, the Uesugi clan would collapse into a disastrous civil war in Ichigo, known as the Otate no Ran. 
Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you enjoyed this video and found it to be most informative.